All right, so um, like I had talked about in class today a little bit, um, how today we're going to learn about law of signs again, but we're going to talk about specifically what we call the ambiguous case. And it all comes back to our four quadrants that we did at the beginning of the year um, and the all students take calculus, so where the trig functions are positive and negative. So because sine is positive in this quadrant one and in quadrant two, we have to consider that when we use law of sines, we could have two angles when we solve for an angle, depending on um, what we find. So you could end up with, let's say you solve for an angle and it was 45 degrees. Your other angle that was given to you was 50. That means you could actually end up with a couple of different answers. You could end up with um, the acute angle for your angle or the obtuse angle for your angle. So you sometimes end up with two sets of triangles with the same information. So we're going to go through um, two here where we're going to solve and we'll get two triangles as our answer or we're going to solve and only get one triangle as our answer. You might even sometimes solve and not be able to get a triangle at all because it just doesn't fit. So we're going to go through all three scenarios of how law of signs could work. Um, so just as a reminder, our law of signs, we take the sine of the angle over the side opposite of it is equal to the sine of a different angle over its opposite side and sine of the third angle over its opposite side. So in the first one I want to do with you, we're going to solve the triangle just like we've done before. We have angle A is 42 degrees, side A is 22, and side B is 12. So if we're going to use law of sines, because we have an angle and its opposite side and another side, so we can start by finding angle B. So sine of 42 over 22 equals sine of angle B over 12. So if we cross multiply, we're going to get 22 sine B equals 12 sine 42. And then we'll divide both sides by 22. And then we'll take uh, our inverse sine to find angle B. So inverse sine of 12 sine 42 over 22. So what does this give us for B? when we put, plug this into our calculator, we end up with 21.406 degrees. So this is what we want to look at. Right now it's saying we have a triangle that's 42 degrees on one angle and 21.406 on the other. Well, we can find angle C by doing 180 minus the sum of 42 and 21.406. And we get that 63.406. Oops. So when we subtract that from 180, we get that our third angle, C, is 116.594 degrees. So right now we have three angles of our triangle. But we also have to consider what if it was talking about, so we found this angle, 21, as our angle B, but what if it was talking about the sign from this direction that gave us the same value? So to get this angle from here all the way to here, so in other words, the obtuse, we would do 180 minus 21.406 and that means we could have also had 158 
2.594. So technically, when we inverse sign this, we could get two answers. We get the one from quadrant one, and we get the answer from quadrant two, which is 158.594. So the ambiguous case is pretty much opening it up to be either the acute angle that you find that in quadrant one, or the other positive angle from quadrant two. So again, we got this by doing 180 minus the acute angle that we found in our calculator for the first side, uh, for our first one. So how to tell if you're going to use this? So when we, we did found C by taking 180 minus 42 minus 21, we found our angle C. Now we're going to do the same thing to find angle C, but with angle, this new angle. So if we did 158, point five nine four plus forty two I get two hundred so if I were to do 180 minus two like already with just the the forty two and this angle I'm over hundred and eighty which is how I know that the this one isn't gonna work so if uh, so this one's gonna be just like the ones we've done where we're only gonna have one triangle so once you have this, you have your three angles, now you can find your missing side the same way we've done it before, where we do our sine of C over side C equals sine of A over side A. So we can cross multiply. 22 sine 116.594 equals sine 42 times C. Divide both sides by sine 42. And we can get that C, plug all that into our calculator, we get C is 29.4. So we have our missing pieces, one, two, three. So the only part that's really different from what we did with law of signs before is that we have to check the obtuse angle as well as the acute angle when we solve for an angle using law of signs. Sometimes it won't work, like in this one. We're gonna do another one where it does work. And if it does work, we end up with two different sets of triangles. And we'll go over that next. Sometimes you'll get a no solution. And the no solution I'm going to save uh, for class time. Um, but I wanted to go through the one solution as well as the two solutions so that you guys can kind of get an idea. <clears throat> OK, so this next one, you'll see how we end up with two solutions. So we're going to be given angle A is 20.5 degrees, uh, side A is 12, and side B is 31. So we're going to start it the same way we always do, and that is set up and find what's something that's missing. So here again, just like the one before, I'm going to start by finding angle B, because I know side B. So sine of A over side A equals sine of B, which we don't know, over side B. So we're going to cross multiply. And then divide both sides by 12. So 31 sine 20.5 over 12 equals sine of B. And then we're going to inverse sine both sides. So inverse sine of 31 sine 20.5 over 12 equals our angle B. So when we do this, plug this into our calculator, we end up with 64.783 degrees. 
Okay, but again, that's the acute angle. So if we think about our sine, that's this angle on the acute side. What about the one that's positive in the second quadrant, so the obtuse? So we're gonna do 180 minus the 64.783. And when we do that, we get a second angle that could work of 115.217. So here we have two possible answers that could work for B. So to be able to kind of tell which, whether or not it'll work, we have to find the third angle. If we can find a third angle, then we'll have two triangles. If we can't, then we'll just have the one with the acute. So let's find angle C. So I'm going to start, so this I'm going to call 1, so that's the one I'm going to do first. So here's my first C that I'm going to try to find. I'm going to do 180 minus 20.5 minus 64.783. When I do that, I'm going to get 94.717 degrees. Okay, so right now I have a triangle that has angle A at 20.5, B at 64.783, and angle C at 94.717. But I'm also going to try to see if I have a second triangle. So if I were to do the same information using this angle now, so 180 minus 20.5 minus 115.217, we get 44.283. So that means we actually, because this is, this is an actual angle, we didn't get something that was negative, that means we could have two triangles. We could have the triangle with 20.5, 64.783, and 94.717, or we could have the triangle that has the same information, but where angle B is 115 and angle C is 44. So that means when we go to find the third side, so the missing side, we have to again find two, the two possibilities. So for side C, so I'm going to again angle one, so or triangle number one, so I'm going to use the two angles here or one of the angles from there. Sine of 20.5 over 12 equals sine of 94.717 over side C. We can cross multiply and we get C sine 20.5 equals 12 sine 94.717 and when we divide here we end up with 34 0.149 as our side length. So again, that's for triangle number one. So we'll have this information, these three is the same, with this angle, this angle, and this side. We'll do the same thing using the second triangle's information. So sine of 20.5 over 12 equals now I'm going to use my other angle C, 44.283 over C, cross multiply, and then divide both sides by sine 20.5, and when we do that we get that side C is 23.924. So when you have some so whenever you're solving for the angle in your law of sines, you have the the possibility for the ambiguous case that you have to check. It doesn't always end up where you have two triangles, but sometimes it does. So again, when you're doing your law of sines, and you're solving for a missing angle. So on both of these, it was an angle that we were solving for. You have to consider both the acute, the angle that's in quadrant one, 
and the obtuse positive angle that's in quadrant two when you're checking your, for your answers in your triangle. If you go and try to find C and you end up with a negative number, cross it off. It means you don't have two triangles, you just have one. But in number two, we, did, we found angle C and we got positive angles for both of them, which means we could have two triangles. We could have the obtuse triangle where we have the 115, or we could have the obtuse triangle where we have a 94 as our largest angle. And so if you do have that, then you have to find two complete sets of information, meaning you have to find two, the two different possible missing sides as well to go with each triangle. So like I said, there's one more type that you can have in the ambiguous case that I'll go over in class, and that is the case where you have no solution. So we're gonna do that one tomorrow in class. Um, so come with questions. I know this is a little weird, so please come with questions. If we need to go through it again, just let me know, because um, this is also our last new thing of the unit. So if you have any questions, again, please come in ready to ask them, and we'll get to work in class.